right, good morning everybody. Here is uh, number video number dos or dos about the uh, engine being rebuilt. And I'm a little tired, it's a little early in the morning, but it's alright baby. Um, so welcome back. We are going to do now the pistons. Uh, I'm going to try to do my best as far as describing how I do the pistons. Keep this in mind, uh, when we talk about ring gap, ring gap is going to vary on the application of what you're doing. Now remember these are stuck pistons, so essentially the ring gap isn't going to be too crazy now. Uh, they say the bigger the gap, the more the horsepower, but the bigger the gap, the more uh, blow by you're going to get. The shorter the gap, chance of ring line failure is higher, but less blow by, clearances are a little tighter, so um, my ring gap is going to be different. Um, someone with more horsepower or want to do more horsepower, whatever the case is, yeah, their ring gap is going to be different. So it also depends on machining. Maybe the machine shop said run this type of ring gap. So use your own discretion when it comes to gapping your rings. Uh, you know, I don't want you to use, and that's why I kind of don't want to say my ring gap because if I say my ring gap, then someone's going to blow their shit up and says, hey, Miguel Estesration said that this is not other one. Of, I am not responsible for you guys' engines. I'm responsible for mine. Um, and I want to be as very honest as I can with that because I don't want no one to blow their shit up and say it was me. Uh, this is just my way of doing things. Again, my way of doing things could be completely different um, than how you guys are doing things. Not saying it's your way of, is, is the wrong way or anything, but it's just my way of doing things. So, uh, a ring gap is something that, you know, you look on the forums, people are going to tell you something completely different. <clears throat> Some people run a. 20,000s, which is like minimum you have to run at least 20. Some people run the high of 40, which is where the minimum of the biggest ring gap you can run on, I believe the stock ones is 40 high and 20 low. I have to double check my sheet. Also, I did put a link to the the whole factory service manual on my last video, so go check that one out. Um, and then I see there's a lot of people that are watching my videos. Please subscribe, would help us out tremendously as well. So with that being said, we're going to get started and I'm just going to run. I already put three pistons in. I didn't want to put the fourth one until I get a chance to show you guys what it's all about. So just bear with me and let's just do it. I'm going to do how I do it. And um, hopefully it helps you guys out just like the last video. It seems like people like it. So we'll do the same thing. But I'm going to shut up now and we're going to get started. I always make sure that I clean the walls up uh, with any kind of just, you know, something that doesn't bring out a lot of lint. In this case, I'm going to use a one of these rags real quick, watch out for the lint, and then I just like to use just something simple like WD-40. Uh, nothing too fancy, just to lubricate and clean the walls of the cylinder. Now the walls have been machined to, to make sure that they have, that they fit a stock bore. So also keep that in mind when you guys are doing this. To, I, I took mine to the machine shop. You can hone it at home by yourself, but I just wanted to do it this way to make sure everything is as square as possible. And you can also check with the dob oil indicator, uh, the clearances to make sure that it fits your piston correctly. <clears throat> now that the, uh, that the bore's cleaned up real good, if you'd like, I've already done it, but you can check the uh, the bore. And they want you to check it from like, you know, top to middle to bottom. Um, according to uh, the specs that are in the manual, when you ring gap the pistons, I've seen a lot of people that ring gap it to here. When you set the piston, they say to measure around here, which is this area. But according to the uh, manual and a lot of other places, they tell you to um, push the piston down with the ring so you can check the gap about right where the oil squirt is at which is right here this little guy right there it's about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the bore that's how they want you to check your bore now I have just with these over here I've checked the bore um, from the bottom of the bore with the ring gap and I also checked it right here just to because there are wear areas of where the piston, you know, goes up and down. So I just, just for shits and giggles, I was measuring in here too, but I was always kind of going by the bottom one. Um, so I already did that. Now is 
Now we're going to move over to show you how to essentially the tools I use to get the pistons. Essentially this is our piston that we're going to reuse. Um, the only thing that um, we're not going to reuse is obviously the bolts and I got ARP for these rod bolts. Take these off. Never, never reuse your rod bolts. Get brand new rod bolts. You don't have to. You don't have to use ARP, but I like to use ARP, and that's what we're going to use. Also, what I did when installing, when I do install these, I made a little kind of call it jig or something. But this is what I did. I took the old rod bolts and I cut it so I can put this um, rubber grommet at the end. So when I'm guiding the rods in, it doesn't nick the cam or crank. Get out of the light. Yeah, this is what it looks like. And all I did was honestly, they have like a big, bigger tool that are longer to guide it in. All I did was just cut the head off. And it's a cheap way of guiding it in without having to nick the crank. So <clears throat> we'll use that later. All right, guys, we're just about ready to start filing our pistons down. Well just about ready to fit our pistons and see what the ring gap is. You're gonna need a, a, a ring file, which is, you can get them really expensive or really cheap, Amazon. And your feeler gauges of basically from start to finish what you think your max gap is gonna be compared to what your, uh, you know, your low end gap is gonna be. Um, these are just really, really important with this. If you don't have feeler gauges, don't do this. You're gonna fuck shit up and then you're gonna get mad. <clears throat> Obviously, now we took all the stuff out of the piston, all the rings out of the pistons. This is what your piston's gonna look like. I like to lube a little bit of oil in here when I start fitting it in there. I like the pistons to slide real nice. I don't want it to be all um, scratching the surface of the saddle or anything like that. So, <clears throat> we're gonna start with uh, our top ring first. Top ring, uh, second ring, and then your O-ring here. So we're gonna just do this one right here. We're gonna start with that one. We're gonna try to gap that one. We're gonna try to set our gap between 23 to 24 thousandths. That's what I'm gonna set it. It's a little tighter than normal, but some people run it to 40, some people run it to 30. It really all just depends on you. Everyone has a preference. To me, the only thing you don't wanna do is go too tight or way too big, but there is a gap that, and the manual that gives you, I believe, from 20 to 40. So. Pick your poison or which one you want to do. Okay, we're going to install a piston now, or a ring now. And this is just an ungapped piston. Let me put my piston down. I did put oil in the in the walls or WD-40, whichever you want to do, just as long as it lubricates. And um, always check before, and even a new ring, make sure that it's a square fit. I'm trying to get it good in. Then when you shut it, it's nice and tight. That it's not at an angle or anything. You want this gap to be nice and tight. So we're gonna put our piston ring in. I like to squeeze in the middle, flip it to its side. <coughs> because of how the specs tell you to, I like to use the, the higher the higher dome of this, flip it around so that it basically touches the old squirters, and that's kind of where you want it to be your measuring stick as far as how low you want to go. They make special tools, but honest to God, it's the same shit if you use a piston. Okay, the piston is all the way in the bottom. See, and now we have our gap of our piston ring right there. And then now we're going to check our gap right here. That's where we're going to check our gap. Um, we're going to shoot for, like I said, the 23 to 24. But I'm going to try the short end of the scale first and see where's that. That kind of lays in there first. It's a little bright, hold on. Definitely way too tight. So now we know that the piston ring is too tight. We definitely have to gap it. You don't want to leave it like this because this is really, really tight. Um, if you leave it like this, it will guarantee to break a ring land because of just how very, very the clearances are tight on this one. Now we're going to take it off. Now that we know that we have to get the rings, now uh, we can use our ring filer 
and also keep in mind that these rings have a top and bottom and I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but there's an M right there for Mali or Mali Muli or however you want to call it there's an M right there that's your top this is what these piston rings come with the stock ones the stock ones have a dot that's your top do not put them the opposite way it will cause problems damage money well, now that we can file our pistons we're gonna put up people use it this way people use it this way I like to use it this way because everything is gonna be flat you're not having to use your wrist as an angle and I'm wearing look at this I'm wearing flip-flops and socks leave me alone <coughs> so then when you're filing them don't don't go this way because you can actually break some of the coating you want to go the opposite way that's just me doing it my way again you could go however way you want to do it no one's gonna hurt your feelings okay so now we know where we got to go keep it pushed up against her keep some pressure there and then just start filing down make sure this is nice and tight it's going back and forth multiple times doing this Doing the top ring, doing the bottom ring, you don't really gap the wool rings. You can if you'd like to, but this is just my way of doing it. I'm going to put this on time lapse now, and I'm just going to just start gapping, ring, and just gapping, checking, gapping, checking, gapping, checking. And then once they're all gapped and ready to go, then I'll show you how I put the piston on. Now that we get all the piston rings filed, um, I put them all in oil, let them soak in there for a little bit. Uh, after you're done checking the gap, I always like to use a little uh, file to make sure, I can't get any light over here. I like to use like a file to just go through the gap and just make sure that there are not like any sharp edges there. Clean the gap up. <clears throat> after that, clean them up and then put them in the, uh, in the oil, let them soak in for a little bit. We're getting close to putting this piston on, but I want to make sure I'm clear about something. There's this arrow right here. If you can see it. Right there. This is the front of the engine. It's here. The rear of the engine is back there, which is where you're rear main seal and everything else at <clears throat> so when you install these stock pistons please make sure that you follow this arrow it'll tell you where the front of the engine is at make sure you follow that arrow so all the domes so all the domes are according to where they should be at don't put the dome the opposite way i've seen videos of people doing that don't do that i just want to clarify that up to when you install those pistons you follow that arrow on the stock piston so now we're going to start putting our rings in now that they've been soaking in the oil. Uh, there's a way, once you put them in, there's a way to set these rings. The end gaps, the end gaps of every, from the oil ring to the second to the first, have to be in a specific pattern, a specific way, and I'll explain that once we get up here. But they have to be in a specific way, clocked in a specific way, so that the rings sit properly and everything works as it should. So before we put the rings on, and before we put the piston in, I want to kind of tell you how this gap has to be. <clears throat> we're going to assume that we're going to use a clock method. This right here is noon. This is 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and um, 9 o'clock. So the top ring, the first ring, has to be between 1 and 2. Thing over here. It has to be between one and two. The second ring, second ring on the piston has to be between seven and eight. Okay. And then basically it's 180 across from each other. The O-ring slider, because there's like there's an O-ring 
and then there's like the two all the two of the o-ring sliders and the top o-ring slider has to be between four and five here o-ring expander has to be between seven and eight which is around right here and then uh, the bottom o-ring slider between 10 and 11 o'clock 180 uh, out from the top side slider which is here I know that's kind of confusing I'm gonna put the ring on I'm gonna put all the rings on set it and then I'll show you what I'm talking about all right, we set our piston ring gap. We gapped everything. We filed everything that needs to be down. Now uh, everything's all just ready to go in. This is what I was talking about. This right here, the end, the piston ring end gap has to be different. That's for the uh, bottom of the oil rings right there. But essentially, when you drop it down, we're gonna use the clock method: the 12, the uh, six, the three, and the nine. So. I think I told you in the last on the last part what it is. As soon as you set the end, end gap to every single one of them, you got the one here, you got the lower here, you got the bottom one here. I mean, kind of follow that instruction as far as setting the end gap, and then you're basically ready to loop everything up in here, put the uh, put the bearing in, and then we're gonna start sliding it in there. So just let me get stuff set up. And then I'm going to start sliding that ring in there. I also oiled up the wall. I think we talked about that. And we're going to just slightly knock it in place. These are what these are for. To make sure it doesn't knock anything. And these are cracked rods. So everything has to fit in order. So there's kind of no way to fuck this up. So give me a second. Let me get stuff ready. And then we'll start uh, setting it in place. Just try to make sure that the end gaps kind of stay there. When you uh, get the compressor on it. To not let it go anywhere. All right, boys. Everything is prepped. Everything is ready to go. I got my uh, I, uh, my uh, piston ring compressor here. I got my cam cap or crank cap in there. Crank camp, damn it. Crank bearing with lube in there, and I got my little thimble thingy so that it doesn't scratch anything. Now we're gonna set it in place. Make sure you follow the arrow where it's supposed to go. Okay. Give it a little blow tap. If you have two, if you have two people, one can hit it down, one can guide it in, but it's only me. So I'm gonna just go like this and guide it in as I tap it in. you tap the ring in or the piston in obviously it's all the way seated you got your camber make sure that's square make sure that's not trying to go anywhere make sure that thing's in order that's why these are important to have here I'm gonna take these off I'm gonna take the cap on the other side with lube and then I'm gonna put it in my crank okay also I want to make sure I know that I marked this side with this thing so that I know that the cam cap is supposed to go this way because we want the uh, the notch here to not interfere with the notch there obviously it's just common sense stuff but I want to make sure I let you guys know about that so it's also like I said it's a crack style rod cap so it's gonna have the crack styles in it it didn't make any sense but you know what I'm saying so I numbered it so I know which side goes to where I'm gonna put the bearing in there I'm gonna put the lube in here then I'm going to put my air piece does. Just give me a second. Okay. Now we're going to slide it in carefully. Put our ARP bolts in there. You don't have to use ARP. I'm extra. That's just how I am.
first initial torque spec we're going to do it to 20 foot pounds both and that's what we're going to do oh there's no socket there everybody let me get my socket oh brother this guy stinks okay 20 foot pounds 20 foot pounds check again check again now they want you to do a quarter of a turn so think about it as how it's basically like an angle so a quarter of a turn you want to go a quarter of a turn you start up in the top Turn. <clears throat> okay, quarter return, torque to 20, and then quarter return. Now this is tight, this is good to go. You can also check the end play as far as where you're, uh, um, you can stick a feeler gauge in here and check what kind of gap you have and all that other stuff, but you can. I don't know the spec off the top of my head, but now that these are torqued down, then I'm going to mark it. Now I know that this was my last uh, piston to put in with the rod, but I also like to mark it like this, just to know that my step is finished with this side. Keep it professional, keep it clean, and then you move on to whatever you got to move on next. That way you know, like, hey, I didn't miss torquing this. That's all nice and clean. Get your paint pen. They work amazing, and they do their job. These steps were followed. Uh, you basically just essentially just installed a crank. Uh, uh, you install the crank. You install the crank scraper. Cr scrank. The DCR thing. I can't talk today. It's too early. Uh, you installed their all new bearings. You installed all new rings. The only thing that we reused here was the piston uh, and the um, the piston itself with uh, the rod itself. Everything else was fresh. Um, so if you did this correctly, you just did this by yourself. And uh, if something blows up, it is not my fault. It is your fault. So, um, but essentially this is, it wasn't that bad. The next thing we're going to do is possibly do the uh, oil pump install on the next video. The oil pump install and the water pump. And what was the other thing I was going to do? The windage tray for the DCR. So I'll chop it up in a couple of videos so you guys can see what I'm doing. But I wanted to be kind of as descriptive as possible with this one. <clears throat> and if I miss anything, let me know. Um, there's something I could always work on. Uh, but um, kind of just try to simplify it for you guys. So it's not like two specs, too much crazy shit going on. And you guys, you guys get the gist of it. The next one will probably be the oil pump video. There's a couple videos on YouTube that don't really... There's one that it doesn't really tell you much. It just kind of just... I'm not going to shit on the person, but when I do the video, I'll try to be as descriptive as possible. So there's a specific way of priming the oil pump so that you don't lose any oil pressure in the first initial startup. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how I would do that uh, on the next video. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, please subscribe. We're really close to 100 subscribers. I would love to get to 1,000. But until then... Just, if you watch the video and you like the content, just subscribe, man. I mean, we can be best friends outside of work, you know? It's all right. So, all right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for the next video coming shortly. I hope you guys like the content. So, thanks, guys.